Hello and welcome back to the wild Wee! Eric! <laughs> So yes, hello and welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to bring this review from the beautiful coastline at North Berwick, which is on the east coast of Scotland, and it's stunning. It's just very windy, so I hope you can hear me. <laughs> and today's review is all about the Fujifilm X-T30 Mark II, which is this beautiful little camera body right here. Now Fujifilm sent this to me a few weeks ago, and I have been pretty much testing it nearly every day so I can put together this review for you guys. This is not a technical review, it's just a review of my experience of this camera body for the last few weeks. And I've tried to test it in lots of different scenarios so I can really give you a constructive and fair review. Um, so yeah, I hope I've done that anyway and I hope you enjoy it. But anyway, let's get cracking on with this review. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is first impressions. What was my first impression of this camera body? Um, I was nervous because <laughs> I've shot with the X-T3 now for nearly three years and it was hard for me to like trust, trust another camera body. I was like, oh, um, <laughs> especially one so different. And I was just think this is like a message to put across to anyone out there you can get very stuck in your own camera gear and then not give anything else a chance because you're so used to it, you're familiar with it and you get connected with it because you take it everywhere with you. And this is my problem. <laughs> I went up to Edinburgh and I carried my X-T3 with me still in my bag. Um, but I did not touch my X-T3. I didn't even take it out my bag because ladies and gentlemen, the X-T30 Mark II was a little dark horse, I'll tell you that. And it was incredibly surprising. And that was my first impression of it, was wow. So the first point I wanted to touch upon was style. Now, you have to give it to Fujifilm. They have captured such lovely nostalgia, vintage retro vibes in their equipment. And I really hope this is something that they uphold in the future because it's so nice to have a camera body that's different from the norm. And when I was in Edinburgh, I had so many people ask me, they're like, what is your camera body? What is that? Is that an SLR? And like, it brings a smile to people's face because it makes them think about the days they might shot with an SLR. And I love that because I did. And that's what I love about it. And that's kind of what sold it to me in the first place because I was like, something different about Fujifilm. And I really love that about it. So their style and the style of this camera body is just perfect. Look at it, love it. Love the silver and it's beautiful. Okie dokie. So the next point I wanted to discuss is image quality. Now, I am very picky, very picky when it comes to image quality. I like crisp, clear, beautiful images and I have to say <laughs> this camera body delivered because they were super strong super clear and really really just good quality and not only that the tones and the colors it picked up everything so lovely like dreamy so I was really impressed by it like really impressed like when I was taking pictures or filming I didn't need to edit much at all because it really picked up everything super well it's like a quality finish which I was really happy with but obviously a camera body then has to work in synergy in harmony with its lenses that are attached and it did it worked really well it created this lovely balance and created beautiful images which I will give examples of if I haven't already but you shall see the harmony of what I mean <laughs> and moving on from this you can shoot in raw and I always recommend shooting in RAW because you get that extra refinement for adjustment and that more scope and scale to edit your pictures with and just, yeah, more details. So overall, I felt the image quality for this camera body was fantastic. And to be honest, I felt it was on par with my X-T3. And I was doing the review with the 23mm and the 33mm at the same time as the X-T30 Mark II. 
That was a mouthful. <laughs> and for me to put down my own camera and use a different camera and be really happy with it speaks a lot about the Fujifilm XT30 Mark II because it did fantastic. It did a brilliant job. Eric, oh, here's the pirate. Oh, did you find treasure? Did you find treasure? I bet you found all the treasure. Now this leads me on to my next point, which is the build. And this camera body is so small. Look at it, it's tiny and it's so portable. Like when I was walking around Edinburgh, I just had this in my hand with a lens and I was just literally holding the lens and walking around with it in my hand. And it's so lightweight. And I think if you're thinking about traveling or doing whatever and you want something lightweight and you can get a small lens to go with it, it's perfect for it. It's just pocket size fits great really good really really good and it's even got a little built-in flash which is so cute a little flash on it <laughs> my cons though leading from the build is that if you have got quite big hands you might struggle because it is quite small um, and the viewfinder was a little bit difficult to adjust here um, when you've got little hands i mean i've only got little hands so if you do have big hands you may struggle with a little bit you may not i don't know but it's just something to be aware of because it is very small and another thing i found is just a shame that the screen only tilts this way so you can't tilt it outwards or all the way if you want to do vlogging you can only tilt it this way um, which is again it's a little bit of like if you're shooting in portrait you can't lift it this way if you want to get low to the ground but linking to the lcd screen it is such good quality and actually it made me realize the difference between my one on my xt3 and then with this one it's a very very good lcd screen very clear and crisp and you can see exactly what you're shooting with because i found the live viewfinder with the xt3 sometimes you take a picture and it's a little bit darker so that just might be me doing something wrong but this it was spot on what you saw on the lcd screen the viewfinder when you took the picture that was there so that was really good really really good the only other con which was slightly annoying was the fact that when you have a tripod amount attached to the camera body you cannot access the battery or sd card compartment they're under the same doorway so it just was blocked by the tripod mount which is yeah a little bit annoying so yeah that's all my points about the build um, I do think it's great, really good build, sturdy, it's solid. You didn't worry about putting it in your bag. It felt robust enough to be in there and you're not gonna damage it. So yeah, it was good for that. Apart from the points I made, really good for the build. So the next point I want to discuss is shooting. Oh, I've just seen a jellyfish. Look, it's a little jellyfish. So in terms of the ease, this camera is very easy to pick up and just take out and shoot with. It has the same interface as the X-T3, so if you've shot already with a Fujifilm camera body, you'll be easily able to transfer it and pick up another one. Not a problem. The only thing I did find when I first started shooting with it was that um, it didn't have the ISO toggle or dial at the top of the camera like it does on the X-T3. And I really missed that because I really liked having that but I didn't realize it has the little dial at the side as well. You can adjust the ISO with. So in the wise words of my father, RTFM, which means read the flipping manual. <laughs> okay, so to move on to uh, ease of use, you have the little joystick you can use to adjust your focus. You have your Q button as well, so you can get all your little functions to set that up, which is really great. Sometimes I felt like I knocked the Q button just by mistake, but I'm not familiar with this camera, so it might have been why. In terms of your simulation modes or picture profiles, there's a load of them again. So you have a nice option and an array of selections with that. You've still got your bracketing, your burst shots, your pano, your bulb mode for long exposures, and you've got fast shutter speed as well. So it's great. So you've got all these extra elements and these capabilities uh, with your shooting modes as well, which is fantastic. In terms of the actual practicalities of shooting, I did test this camera body with my telephoto lens, which is a 100 to 400 millimeter. And it did work and I've got some shots which I can show you. I just felt at some times it was probably a bit too lens heavy. And I'm used to shooting it with my X-T3, which has the battery grip attached to it, which made it a little bit easier to kind of balance out. But I still did it. You can still achieve it. So it's not like it's unachievable at all. And finally, this camera body really offers some fast and responsive autofocus for both shooting and for filming, which is fantastic, especially filming, which I'll go on to. Um, but if you're looking for like, you know, all rounded shooting experience, it didn't fail. It was so good. It was really good. And I actually thoroughly enjoyed shooting with it. 
Um, if you're looking for something a little bit more robust and a bit more bulk to it, there may be you know, another model, but that's more to do with the build rather than the shooting. But the shooting will not disappoint you. It was very, very good. Bar the little tweaks that I mentioned, just as like a telephoto lens and stuff, I think it was really good. It's very capable, and that's the main thing to remember. Very capable, and the image quality is great and easy to shoot with. Not walking your ass already. <laughs> Okay, so my next point is filming. Oh, I tell you what, I loved filming with this body. This body, with this camera body. <laughs> and I will show you why, I'll give you examples. And, oh, Eric, look, there's a ball there. Go get it. He's on a ball. He loves finding balls. Anyway, um, yeah, I love filming with this camera body. And I think because it's so compact, and it had the good tracking on it. Like it really enjoyed the tracking. And I think then once you put that with a wider angle lens or whatever, I do a lot of self portrait filming and shooting. Uh, so it meant I could just have this camera body in my hand and it was fine, it was easy. And I could just be holding the camera body whilst doing my aerial stuff at the same time. And it wasn't a problem, it was really good. Um, and I actually found since shooting with that camera body, with the X-T30 Mark II, um, I actually got more inspired to do filming. So that was quite interesting. So yeah, I really loved filming with this. I love that you got the option of the 120 um, frames and then the 240. So you have five times slower or 10 times slower. Um, I did find when I used the 10 times slower, it left like a little bit of grain in the background but that could be due to me. I'm not a videographer, I'm not an expert, so I could have been doing something wrong. But I love that it had the option to do 10 times slower. So I think both shooting and filming, you're getting such good quality. And I was really surprised. And I think that's my main thing from this is that I was surprised how much I didn't want to pick up my own camera and wanted to keep shooting with the X-T30. Mark II. Um, it really surprised me, hence why I called it the dark horse, because it is. Uh, so yeah, filming was amazing. Here are some examples. Um, see what you think. Um, you might not like it, but <laughs> I enjoyed it. So yeah, um, here you go. <laughs> Like the sunset fiend that I am, I've just been staying out until the glorious sun has set in front of me. And I've had it to myself. It had centre stage along the horizon and I watched it the whole time and it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Worth coming out to the coast for. <laughs> That's what magic hour gets you, staying up till late and just enjoying this moment. It's beautiful, really, really beautiful. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, to summarize, this camera body is super lovely, super amazing, really good image quality, really high standard, mid-entry level camera. And, you know, it's really good value for its money. I'm quite amazed with the quality you get for the price as well. I think they've done a fantastic job. Yes, there's a few little cons that I've mentioned, but that doesn't take away from the final product you get from using this camera body, like in your pictures and stuff. And that's what the main thing is, isn't it? Uh, and there's always trade-offs. You can't have anything practically perfect, I guess. But yeah, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. I will try and answer them. If you have any feedback or anything, just drop a comment below. I always do my best to reply to everyone's lovely messages and just a big thank you as well to everyone that drops me a comment. It's super sweet and super kind and yeah, it's really nice to just like read all your comments and I do take the time to read every single one of them. So thank you very much for that. Anywho, I shall get going. Uh, but yeah, I hope you found this useful and thank you for watching. Stay awesome, stay new, 
stay wild, stay free, because that is how you should live your beautiful life. And until next time, goodbye for now. Bye-bye. Oh, I'm gonna eat you. You better run, you're like a loaf of bread. And I love bread. Woo! How's the 21.6 megapixel APS-C sensor? Is that recording? I swear to God, the amount of times I've like spoke to this camera and not hit record. Oh, I've done it so many times today. It's so infuriating. <laughs> oh, there's so many jellyfish everywhere. This is crazy. Probably like jelly-like as well. It's just got really bright all of a sudden. Ah, on second. Flip it neck. So overall shooting with this lens, uh, with this lens, ah. Oh. Okay, I'm just walking into the glorious sun that's drawing me in. <laughs> you just ran a mile. Whee! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Go, Eric, I'm gonna eat you, quick. And the lighthouse has just turned its light on. Sorry, I got a bit distracted there. <laughs> anyway, until next time, goodbye for now. Bye-bye.